What the Venus Project proposes is that we bring all the nations together and uh, take care of everything on Earth. We pledge allegiance to the environment and all the world's people. The end of separate nations, the end of the artificial boundaries that separate people, and the sharing of all the world's resources by all the world's people. If few nations control most of the Earth's resources, you're going to have territorial disputes. You're going to have war. You're going to have all the problems you've always had. That's why most people think it's human nature. They think man is basically greedy and that this is why you have problems. That is not true. A banker, a serial killer, and a gangster, and a priest are made by environment. It's not human behavior, it's the environment we come from which generates behavior. We are victims of culture, all of us. That's why we have a distorted view. We believe that some people are good, some are bad, some are creative, some are less creative. All that's bunk. Everyone can be creative. Now they tell you in your schools that plants grow. That's a lie. They need water, sunshine, soil, moisture, gravity, all those things. Without them, the plant, plant doesn't move. There is nothing in the earth today that is not acted upon by resident forces. And your language was designed hundreds of years ago. That's why we can't talk to each other. We talk at one another, not to one another. A lawyer is a guy that takes language, twists it around to any way he wants to. If he's skilled at it, he could knock you out, put you in jail. A lawyer would be considered a criminal in the future. So would all bankers and all businessmen and all politicians. Don't forget, you're brought up to believe that King Solomon was a great guy. He had a thousand wives. He'd be arrested today as a bigamist. So all the things that you're taught, uh, they teach you to fit in with this culture. There's no such thing as thinking things over. You think within the context of the way you were brought up. So it's very hard for so-called normal people to step outside of the environment. Now in the early days in the Roman Empire, I am told that they used to feed Christians lions. Now the family would come Saturday and Sunday to see Christians being fed the lions. And the kids would say, Daddy, can we come next week to see Christians being fed the lions? Daddy would say, if you behave yourself. Are these kids sick? No, they're normal to that culture. There are no good or bad people. There are no corrupt people or dishonest people, creative people, lazy people, all that's bunk. If you're raised in a society that understands human behavior, you don't have those variations. You can block them through education. You must design for human comfort and you must design cities with art centers, music centers, cultural centers, I can only talk a little bit about America because that's where I'm from. I don't like our country. It's completely corrupt. And that's for most civilizations today. They're all corrupt. I'm sorry to say that. I don't like what I'm saying. I wish it were otherwise. We are brought up in a system called established. Established means it serves the interest of the lead group, the control group. What we really need is an emergent society. There are no great men, no great women. All people are creative, but they're not brought up to know what that means. So when they tell you that your government likes you, they're working for you, all that's bunk. When I say people hardly know what they're talking about, because they're not brought up to be sane. They're brought up to fit in with the establishment. National loyalty is really a form of stupidity. All people need clean air, clean water, arable land, and a relevant education. That means no businessmen, no advertising, no investment bankers. I used to work for Ernst Uyudet, and I said, how did you shoot down 70 airplanes? And he said to me, I would fly above aerial combat and watch the rookies that couldn't handle the planes well and knock them off. Now, what kind of a person is that? He's a war hero, great man. There are bums and stupid people 
brought up by an arrogant society that doesn't give a shit about anyone else but the established institutions. Man, this includes me, cannot think or reason. When your car veers to the right, you don't kick it and beat it up. Either your tire pressure's uneven or something's wrong with the steering column, you try to understand. When people, when children beat up other people and hurt other people like a bully, that's part of their conditioning, their associative memory, the system they live under, which doesn't correct that. Schools do not teach you much, they're mostly concerned with propaganda. Most schools don't teach you how to live, find meaning in your own life, how to disagree without getting angry. What is really needed is the intelligent management of the Earth's resources for the benefit of everyone. Now, the only way you can do that is through technology. Everything that you have, your lights, your air conditioning, your automobile, your airplanes, all technology. Politicians can't give you that. Politicians don't know what to do. They make laws, say no to drugs. Well, that's not going to stop a person from selling drugs as long as there's money in it. But if you do away with the money system, and build access centers where anyone can have access to the necessities of life without filling out a million forms or appealing to fresco. It's all available to everyone. Go to your big department stores or your food stores, you'll see lots of stuff. We are now capable of producing an abundance. People say to me, I know two people from the same environment. One turned out to be a priest, the other a gangster. If environment is everything, how do you get those differences? You get those differences by playing with the youngest child, four years old, while well, the seven-year-old stiff. That's where jealousy comes from. It comes from poor manipulation of the variables. If you grade children in school, you hurt the other kids. I got an A, what did you get? F, failure. You know, all of us, by the way, are prostitutes in this system. If you sing and you sell toothpaste, you're a prostitute. If you get up and you say, I got just the house you're looking for, you're a prostitute for the establishment. So there's no good or bad people now. We're perfect reflections of the culture we live in. Again, I'm sorry about that. How can you pray to a God? How can you talk to God? They think through the ego problems that they're specially selected. The Jews are God's chosen people. The Germans are the master race. You know, all these little egocentric people think that they're put here to lead the world into a better direction. Galileo found seashells on the mountaintop. He took it to the Catholic Church and he said, maybe the mountain was once under the water and was pushed up. And the church said, no, the devil put that stuff there to confuse you. So the world you live in is as full of shit as a Christmas turkey. And you're not about to talk to people and turn them around. You have to demonstrate it. So I don't say science is perfect, but it's closer to our problems than any other system. People really don't know what to do, so they put up a sign, thou shalt not steal, don't steal, don't be dishonest. That doesn't change people. All money systems, as they begin to collapse and change, they move toward fascism. It's part of the history of civilization to move in that direction. The wealthy people try to protect what they have. I went to the South Seas when I was 21. Everybody on the island was nude, except when men climbed trees, they wore kind of a jock strap to prevent their balls from being caught in the branches. So everybody walked around nude. And the interesting thing about it is I never saw a native stare at a girl's body. Only her eyes. When you talk to a woman, you never say, hey, get a load of that chick. That's what you get in civilization. You cover the girl. If people swam nude when they were this high, you couldn't sell pictures of a nude girl. Do you understand that? I get to know the natives so well, I watch them make love. And they stroked the whole female, the top of her head, all the way down. They had no fetishes. There were no tit men, leg men, ass men. All that's made by culture. And if you don't use that kind of language around women, you can become equal to one another. So you have to tell them how men think. 
That isn't how they think. That's how they're brought up. When guys poke each other, hey, get a load of that chick, you know. That is learned in the culture. In the islands, they never did that. It's like you stroking a dog. You stroke the whole dog. You don't stop at the ball. You stroke the whole dog. You understand? I'm not your enemy. I'm not trying to hurt you. I'm trying to tell you that if we use science and technology, everyone will be given the best opportunity so that we can bring out the best in every human being.